the wood twins lock eyes. They both sense the buzzing in their senses. Even Caterpillar looks uneasy. There is something coming. A storm tearing through their little sanctuary. Something is reaching out. Dusk and Elliot will answer that call. Kia ora, Legionnaires. Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. No hope. Where we need to get this cat inside stat. And it's probably going to be into the little shed for the time being. That's going to be the safest place that we can put them. Now we do still have some meat in our hand here. We're going to go and put that on the ground and then we're going to shift all of this meat out of the doorway. Except it's already a portal storm. Stop moving items? Yeah, okay. It's too late. Reality is breaking. Okay, let's drop the rucksack to the ground. Let's wield the longsword and we need to try and get that cat back inside. Yeah, it's a, it's a full portal storm now. And if we look at our map here, we can see the center of that storm. And we are going to be going for that center. But yeah, not while Caterpillar is out here. Okay, back inside with you. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go swap positions. Close that door. Elliot, I hope you're ready for whatever is out there. Let's start moving, making our way across. As we hear a voice whispering, It's no, no, we were just preparing ourselves for what is about to happen. And right around Elliot, we hear a high-pitched squeal as alien grass sprouts from the ground. It looks almost like grass, except the blades are serrated and move on their own. Well, good luck getting through that, Elliot. Dusk, push on. He seems to be moving through just fine. Okay, and then there is a presence. A presence both inside and somewhere far away. Dusk reaches out with her mind. Something more than a monologue and less than a dialogue occurs. You can feel it waiting for you to engage it. Dusk speaks. What are you? I am nothing yet. I am endless potential outside your leaking reality. There are fewer rules and more possibilities. I am fertile soil, and you could be a seed. Defensively, Dusk attempts to determine if the voice is a threat, extending her senses alert for danger, and Dusk is almost immediately blinded. In the heart of the portal storm, there's danger everywhere, in the air and ground, in the things half-glimpsed that vanish when you look at them, and in yourself, just waiting for the right conditions to be unleashed. If there's anything sinister in the voice's offer, you cannot tell. What do you do? Dusk closes her inner eye. What can you do for me? You are limited. Here, outside, there are no limits. I could free you from your bonds or bring you halfway here to get a taste. What's halfway between us? A place with enough rules for your present mind and form to function, and enough freedom to let you bend the rules to your advantage. It's not safe, but neither is your present location. I need more than safety. Halfway it is. Okay. You are trapped in yesterday. You hear an angry voice shouting, No! Being from your pathetic world has ever conceived a fragment of the suffering you shall endure. Okay, great. Well, looking around us here, we have a hole to outside. We also have a warped wall. At first glance, this looks like a simple stone wall, but the angles don't add up and the shadows are wrong. Whatever it is, it does not belong here. And the same can be said for the stone floor. Its patterns constantly shift as your mind can't quite understand what it's really seeing. And then in the darkness, we can see something. It says it's a pale reflection, but we don't know what that is just yet. Dusk, let us walk with caution. We have warped walls all around us, and it is very hard to tell what is going on in this space. As it's constantly shifting, it's constantly moving, and perhaps the reflection. Maybe that's what we have to reach. And so, let's see. We're close now, but not quite there. It's shifting again. Ah, we nearly had a way there. We hear footsteps. 
but we cannot reach it, not yet. Around we go, and there it is, a pale reflection. This looks nothing like you, it's barely real. So why does your mind keep mistaking it for you? Dusk, reach out with that mind of yours, and hammer, slamming it into the ground. The pale reflection vanishes, but you can still feel it. So it's still in here somewhere. Even trying to access the map, we have no idea where we are. Okay, um, so then, we can see a red marker on the mini-map. Perhaps we should continue trying to make our way down towards the southeast. If that's even possible, keep moving, Dusk. I see no way through, not as of yet. Okay, and then it opens up and changes again. Another way down. This is very confusing. Another reflection. Something your mind can't pass appears. Despite the distance and obstacles, you know where it is. You can feel its presence as if it was a part of you. So I think we still need to track down this presence. And when we reach it, we shall hammer with our mind. And can we do that from this distance here? We can. We can indeed. Okay, let's breathe, catch our breath, and we've seen yet another. Stop catching. Okay, so, yet again, with telekinetic force, eh, yeah, that's not good enough. We lose concentration, but then succeed again. One more should do at dusk. Here we go. We feel a strange tingling sensation. The pale reflection vanishes, but you can still feel it. Yeah, okay, let's keep moving. Searching for what? I am not sure as of yet. There it is again, another reflection. Further to the south this time. We're getting closer now, but we don't have a way through, not yet. There we go, an opening, all right. Moving close and lash out, headbutting it. Oh, let's make sure that we actually use the blade here, Dusk, and that'll do it. Sinking her fangs into it, the reflection is gone. Okay, we can see that red marker further to the north now. We're gonna keep on trying to move for that, but if we see these reflections appear, we are going to try and strike them down. I hope that Elliot is okay wherever he is. Another, another pale reflection, okay. And it is moving quickly around us at the moment, but we still have no way. There we go, the walls shift in our favor. Oh, and with one swift strike, Dusk takes it out, okay. We seem to be getting further and further from that red. There's the hole to the outside, but that marker, it's away from us now. And another reflection appears. Here we go. Oh, we were close, let's keep moving until it offers us a way. And there we are, it's down. But is it just a distraction? Is it keeping us from what our true goal should be? Another reflection, this time further away, but one that we take out quickly. We don't seem to be able to go any further north than this point. At least it certainly feels that way. No, there we go. Okay, that's an opening. And another presence, another reflection. I'm gonna see if it comes for us. Well, we found an opening. We've got another pale reflection. I honestly don't know if we're able to get further north than the hole to the outside. I feel like we must be able to. You know what? <laughs> I just had a temptation to see if we can smash this wall. Let's enhance our strength. 36, and let's quickly change to force unarmed. Okay, it looks like we're doing damage. But the thing is, I think the wall changes so readily that uh, it, is, it is difficult to tell. Let's stop concentrating for now. We are closer somehow now to that red marker than we were before. So I'm gonna keep on moving. Maybe, maybe instead of trying to go north towards it, we actually need to go further away, deeper into this maze. We're closing in on a reflection again, and it's closer. The further we go away, the closer we get. Okay, yeah, somehow, that seems to be how it's working. Almost like it's inverted. Swirling vortexes, okay, um, what do we do with a swirling vortex? step into it no maybe not maybe that isn't the right call right this second we've got another reflection here that's dealt with okay back near the vortexes again and there's more of them down here more of these vortexes Ooh, i don't i don't know if it's the right call to go for them or not i think maybe if we just get close to them and wait and see what happens if uh if there is a change to the environment yeah I'm just gonna wait here. Okay, yeah, we can see this whole place shifting and changing. I don't think the vortexes are though. They seem to be static. And looking at that red dot, it does seem to be moving backwards and forwards. Like it's get, it gets further away and then sometimes it's closer. So I feel like it is something in this place. 
something that we are meant to try and reach. And now it's gone. Now it's just completely gone. And that hurt. Okay, and once again, it's here. Let's move towards the reflection. Oh, we were close. There we go. Okay, let's put the long sword on the ground for a moment. Pick it up again. We've just stopped the bleeding. Okay, swirling vortex. Ah, uh, oh, too dangerous. Best to leave it alone. But this one? Okay, this one we can. Weren't you just here? It feels thicker somehow, though. You hear an angry voice shouting. You pollute the purity of this place. Okay, okay, right. Well, I think maybe that's the way to go. If it's thicker, maybe it's a different level of this. And perhaps that is the goal here. We keep moving dusk. And we'll take these pale reflections down wherever we find them. Closing in on another reflection and eliminating it. Oh boy, that one just kind of came out of nowhere. Let's drop the sword, stop the bleeding, get ready to go again. Okay, vortexes yet again. Stepping into it, and it's the same. It's the same deal. So, what is the right answer here then? Do we just take the exit? If that is indeed an exit, let's take this down first. Hang on, one of the vortexes is gone. Okay, interesting. Can we travel further, or is this the furthest point down that we can go? Are the vortexes being removed when we step through them? Maybe. Okay, the place is changing again. Okay, another reflection taken care of. Okay, it's like they're shifting along. Maybe we can find a way through. Okay, let's take a step up here for a moment. I don't think the walls ever appear where we are specifically, so we may still be able to get around this kind of barrier that's here. It'll require quite a bit of waiting, patience, but maybe we can find a way through. Okay, we're gonna pop back out again for a moment here. See if we can get to this from another angle. And again, we find ourselves back here. I think we'll kill the pale reflection that's here now, but I think we're going to go. I think we're gonna try and go out. That's another reflection down. Let's just try and retrace as best we can. Okay, outside, yes. The space around you is damaged and everything near you seems to weigh less. You are safely back in the apocalypse. And I think that that was what we were in. Okay. Elliot is tired. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you are, brother. And interesting. We have an effect after that. One, we're in sunlight at the moment. Weakened gravity. Something is wrong with local space-time and everything near you seems to weigh less. Interesting. How do, does that affect... I, I feel like everything does weigh less. 30 kgs? Okay, very interesting. Well, the storm is still going. We hear a voice whispering. Smile, thing, you're ours now. Okay, how nice. And then again, what's the rush? I think we have another marker. We, we do, we do. It's all the way up here. Another center of the storm. All the way past where Walter is, okay. Let's delete that old note for one. And are we going to go for another? Hang on. We're seeing something. There is a person. A person where? Oh, to the southeast, a common human. It looks like a human looks. You can see them. They can see you. You know, they know, you can see them. They know, you know, you can see them. They move towards you. Uh, Elliot, we both see this person, correct? Yes, we do. Further to the south. We hear a squeal, and we're starting to feel pain. Yeah, the sun is getting to us. Let's knock back some codeine while we see what this thing does. And oh, shifting masses and alien grasses. And then a roar fills your mind, louder than the screaming madness of the portal storm. Multicolored lightning flashes across the sky, then freezes. The lightning expands in your sight until you can see individual electrons tracing their paths through the air. You reach out a hand and some of the electrons change their path. As the world restarts its motion, the lightning crashes into you and through to the ground. A few sparks remain dancing across your hand. As you flex your fingers, lightning crackles between them. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Now I don't know if that's an effect of us going through that dungeon there, but that is a mind over matter effect here. Also, our intelligence has just shot up to 15 currently, which is way higher than normal. Um, let's have a look at those. Awakened electrokinetic. So a telekinetic 
and a electrokinetic as well. So first of all, spark sight. Open your senses to the flow of electricity, revealing nearby electrical creatures or robots. Very cool. And then static touch. Unleash a shock when touching a target, doing a small amount of damage and dazing them. It's like a shocking grasp. So cool. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> that is that is wild. Okay, well, we've got trouble. Um, shifting masses. An animated blotch of conflicting symmetries erratically hovering through the air. It's not even real enough to hold a stable shape, and its entire form is constantly in flux. You can see through it, not as if it was transparent, but as if it wasn't fully there. Okay, well, one is a Elias, and the other, let's see. Let's reach out with our static touch. All right, we shock it. It is still here. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, the shock actually kind of hangs around afterwards. Uh, so, person. What do we do about this person? They are supposedly moving towards us. Yep. Um, oh, great. Flatlanders? An oblong figure floating parallel with the ground, some feet in the air like a piece of paper. It's far thinner than one as well, to the point where it would look invisible if looked at with the right angle. So this is a two-dimensional creature. There's two two-dimensional creatures that are now gliding towards us. Elliot destroys it. And our memory can't decide whether the Flatlander was even there in the first place. Yet another starts to approach as the person gets closer towards us. Dusk loses track of the Flatlander. The moment feels thick as if it's not quite over. No, the storm is still raging and we hear a loud tearing sound nearby. We get closer to the person. We lash out at them and we do some pretty significant damage, but this person is still doing okay. Elliot leaping in to attack them as well. We keep attacking. They're tracking. It's hard to tell. They've just disappeared. You feel something was destroyed inside of you. Okay, that doesn't sound great. Oh yeah, okay, awakened. Your exposure to the portal storm has awakened latent psychic powers in you. I do wonder if Elliot has had a similar um, outcome. Effects? Uh, seemingly not. Well then, okay, um, we hear that angry voice calling out to us yet again. I think we are going to push, push up towards that other location, but Flatlander comes first. Okay. Elliot, let's move. Oh, okay, pulsating chunks of unknown material. Yup, this formless pitch black mass wriggles and pulses on the ground as it reshapes itself before your eyes. It slowly drags itself towards you with many tendrils of varied size. As it gets closer, its pulsing intensifies as if it's reacting to you. Okay, and there's supposedly two of them around here. So we're gonna try and mind hammer once it gets closer. And well, we staggered it, but that's about it. Okay, moving in and striking at it. We're doing some good damage here, but this has got a lot of health. Oh boy. And <laughs> then a million tiny pinpricks in space open for an instant and smoke fills the air. And yeah, it's everywhere. There is no getting away from that. Everywhere we look, there is smoke. It is disappearing pretty quickly, but now we have other things out here, impossible shapes. A twisted shape floating in mid-air. Its angles don't seem to quite add up. It hurts to look at. Is it inanimate, alive, something else? You can't make heads or tails of it at all, but you can see through it, not as if it was transparent, but as if it wasn't quite fully there. Yup, familiar. And the material stabilizes and reforms itself into a small chunk of unknown composition. Is there something on the ground here? Is there something left from where it was? No, seemingly not. And the impossible shape disappears. Okay, okay. Oh, Elliot. The very notion of empty space is made a cruel joke. Nearby nothing becomes even less. A giant hole opens in the sky and several clouds vanish into it. You get a very clear view of the impossible shape. The absence intensifies. Okay, um, I tell you what, buddy, Elliot, we're going to try and pull you out of that space there. Farhand, let's reach out and grab Elliot. Um, okay, he didn't move, but the darkness is gone and the person has reappeared. Is it the same person as before? It's hard to tell. It's, it is hard to tell. More darkness gripping onto Elliot. I think that's the impossible shape that's doing that. It's 
gotta be. Oh, that's a security bot. That's just a straight up security bot. It's gotta be an illusion. It has to be an illusion. Move, move, and keep moving. Okay, it disappears. It was just an illusion. We can see two persons now, and there's an involuntary traveler right in front of us. We hear them call out to us. Okay, there's so much going on. They're wearing a My Little Nazgul t-shirt. How nice. They have an emergency jacket on, rucksack. Who the heck are you? Can we call out to them? Oh, there are two. There are two of them right next to us. One with a nail bat and the other one with a throwing knife. Okay, let's call out then to the first. The first that we saw. Del Hastro Bovis Aranatigres. What? Jan Rodel Ignat Hastor? I guess there's no reason to expect an interdimensional traveler to speak English. Yeah, seemingly not. They're just eating a peanut butter sandwich. Oh, and several identical people walk nearby from nowhere. Let's talk to the other traveler then. And it's the same. Yup, okay. Well, they don't seem to be trying to hurt us at all. We can see an absence nearby as well. Just down that way, in empty space. Okay. Oh, great, and more smoke. Well, let's move up in, in the direction of the person. Elliot, um, okay. We're just gonna have to wait here for a moment. He is trying to move away from the Flatlander. We will move in to assist, and it looks like he's got it under control. Okay, you know what? I think our survival is high enough for us to be able to ride a horse now. If we're quick, I think we can make it out to that point. Um, we could get Elliot safely inside here. Uh, we've got yet another traveler who's just appeared, who has a pistol. Please just remain friendly. Okay, open the door. Right, Elliot, um, I kind of need you to stay in here. Guard this position. Let's see. Ah, oh, we need survival four. Okay then. Elliot, just stick with us for now. We are going to continue up towards the north. You can close the doors behind us. And the sun has gone out. Yeah. And we can see light following the person down below. All the people that are there. Okay, this is totally fine. Elliot, stay with. The light is back. Okay. And then it's out again. The sun snuffed out like a candle. That's okay for dusk. Walter, I hope you're okay over there. We haven't checked on our cat man for a while. The brazier still burns up to the north. And the storm seems to be moving. The center, that is. Like a tornado just kind of tearing across the land. We're going to keep chasing it. And okay, we're just, we have blood appearing all around us. Okay. And the light is back. Great, we're being chased by a shifting mass at the moment. And okay. Elliot has dealt with it, and we are confused. We are moving in a strange way. <sighs> and more smoke. More smoke. Let's just wait, let it pass, and then continue moving. We have shapes coming for us now. Elliot is struggling to keep up. More alien grass. But we're closer now. Closer to that center. And we've got a tough zombie. Hi. Right. Elliot, he is still close. Okay. Got a bloated zombie chasing us as well as a swarm structure. Oh boy, a lot of swarms. Twisting blades. You are uncertain whether this dwarfs you or you dwarf it. Its exact shape and number of dimensions is constantly changing. Yeah, in the center of the storm, it is right here. It's gotta be close now. It's right on where we are. We've got a boomer glutton coming for us now. We need to get a mind hammer off. Take that out from distance, but... I think that's the best that we can get. And our range has been lessened by a lot. Okay, move away from that gas, Elliot. Now the glutton rolls its way towards us as the storm continues to move and more people appear wearing an American flag and wielding a Remington. These involuntary travelers appearing right now may be able to assist us. Let's move back further away. Elliot, oh boy. Okay, how are you faring there, friend? Yeah, it's pretty strong. I'm not surprised. Okay, in 20 memories, it's all going off. Silhouettes of a human body reaching out towards you like it needs help. It has no eyes, but you can still feel it staring through you. Who are all these people to us? Dusk, what's the range on this now? Three, that's the best that we can get. Okay, we're gonna have to get closer then. Make your way in, mind hammer, strike it. Okay, not enough to kill it. Elliot, there you go. Let's take out the others. Striking at the Flatlander, there we go. It's down. 
and an impossible shape. Of course, we are at the center now, or it's just to the north of us yet again, constantly moving still. Will we find it this time? I don't know. We go right past it, and I don't think that we will be able to do anything. We're chasing the center, but we cannot find it. We have already found something, though. I think we just need to keep moving back now. And as much as it pains me, we're going to put our sword away now. We need to get the umbrella out, which we don't seem to have on our person right now. That is, uh, that is unfortunate. Rather unfortunate. Elliot, please do keep up with us. We'll strike at our enemies when we need to. And we're going to take a healthy helping of Codeine. Stay on the move. Oh, great. What? Now, a giant appendage, a gigantic probing appendage, blindly feeling around the area. All of your senses scream at you that this is the size of a truck, yet it only takes up about as much space in the world as you do. It seems to be jutting through a portal, suggesting it is merely a smaller extension of something much larger. Yeah, let's stay away from that please. Elias is still going toe to toe. With a flatlander, we'll move into a system. Okay, there we go, you got it. And we have two more people that have appeared right next to us. I'm glad that they seem to be, you know, um, neutral for the most part. They're seeking coke. Well, good good for them. At least if you could deal with this zombified child, I'd be thankful. Okay, down we go. Oh, and you know what? In terms of vehicles, this sports sedan here is in really good condition. It's one that we actually have saved on the map at the moment. It really doesn't need much to get going. Yeah, it will need a new battery, but the security system's damaged, which is actually that we want it to be. It's got enough wheels, just needs charge. So let's just make a quick note here while we're close by. New bat and charge. There we go, it's close enough. It's close enough. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't want that zombie getting close to the car, so we are going to have to try and take this thing out. Sure enough, we can. <laughs> Let's get the Flatlanders away from there as well, thank you. Elliot, Elliot, well done. Oh, great, and the sun is out yet again. Okay, Walter, are you still down here? Let's see. He is. He is. Walter, will you come with us, maybe? How about that black box? Not yet, but I think you and I... I think we should leave here. And why exactly should I travel with you? I and my brother here can help keep you safe. Yeah, I don't think so. Perhaps it's wise. Perhaps he can see Elliot's true intentions. 62%, it was worth a shot. Stay safe, Walter, please. Oh, and you know what? Yeah, we can't leave him here with these things still around. What's that? What's that thing? A vigilant amalgamation. Okay, we have actually seen that here before. Okay, Walter, hang on. Wow, okay. Dusk slicing and dicing this thing here. Elliot, any moment you want to try and, you know, help us out here, that would just be, you know, fantastic. Oh, it's going for Walter. Let's finish this thing off. A mind hammer ought to do it. Nope, not quite. Let's move in then. Give Walter a chance to get away. Okay. It did drop something, or rather this time it did, a slime rod. It's the only one of its kind. This is an artifact. It may have unknown powers. Try activating them. Okay, right. Does not fit in any pockets. We are, we are finding a way to carry that. You best believe it. Oh, as a gigantic limb tears through reality, it's fine. Walter is running. That's good. How big is this rod? It's, it's not that big. We should be able to carry this. I think we can get it into the box. There we go. Okay. It's in the cardboard box. So, oh man, Walter, just, just stay there for now, buddy. Elliot, how bad is this thing going to be? Well, Dusk swings at it a few times here, and I'm not sure what, if anything, we did to it. Oh, we did damage it a little bit, and I think that got it to go back through its portal. Good. Very good. Where'd the chunk go? Okay, it's down here. We don't want to let this thing get away. We don't want it to go after Walter. <laughs> it's chasing him. What are you doing there, huh? Let's go use far hand. Oh great, there's a swarm structure here now as well. Let's pull it back towards us and let's try and use our static touch. Damn it, it's gotten away. It takes a while for us to cast that. And this thing seems to be alarmingly fast. The swarm structure is gone. Okay, leave Walter B. Okay, it looks like he's been hurt a little bit. We took it out. Okay, we took it out. Horse, 
I'm sorry. If we could help you right now, we would. Nothing seems to be going for it, though. And we just had deja vu. Uh, yet again, as alien grass spawns around us, and that screaming amalgamation now seems to be going for Walter. That kind of glitching that we're seeing, that's, that's us being pulled, yanked back in time somehow. You sure you don't want to change your mind, Walter? I mean, it's your choice, my friend. It's your choice. Elliot, thank you for dealing with that. The amalgamation seems to be staying away from now. But the second, the second that we... God, it's so hard to get towards it. We keep on getting deja vu. We don't seem to be able to get any closer. It just runs. It runs the second that dusk comes back. What's going on with our stamina? Why is it so low constantly? Is the artifact in our position having some kind of effect over us? It's possible. Okay. All very concerning things. It also could just be a weight thing. It's not a weight thing. Okay. Travelers are here. And... Walter is now being attacked by a swarm structure. Okay, that's a lot of things there, buddy. You watch out, and we'll get rid of what's left there. We're kind of getting him um, down towards our place, which, that I'm okay with. You know, the closer he gets to ours, the better. Because we will eventually win Walter over. God, this thing's so annoying. You know what? You know what? I think we're going to do something about that. Yep, let's get that carbine out, Dusk. Drop the sword for now. And we're going to steady up and we're going to take this thing out. Amalgamation? Oh man, we do not have a good chance to hit. <laughs> I think it's probably something to do with the storm. Okay, scratch that plan. I do wonder if we could just charge it down. But it seems to be impossible for us to get close to it. It's strange because this is something that is always here in the real world, in the normal world. But it seems like the deja vu is throwing us away from it. I am trying. I am trying to do everything I can to get to this thing but it seems to be near impossible. Here we go, we're nearly there. Okay, right at it, swing at it, Dusk. Hit this thing, come on. All right, can we throw it against the tree? Four shove, okay, that did do something. Again, the amalgamation is dead. Yes, good, that's done. That's a bit of safety for Walter now. It shouldn't be hunting him anymore. Okay, but we've got a person down here and we have other people. Is that the absence over there? It is. Well, it's a mobile apparently, but maybe that's what's causing this issue, rather causing this intense deja vu whenever we get anywhere near it. Okay, we can move down this way. We can't move towards that person. Oh boy, it's all, uh, it's all happening. <laughs> it is all happening. And I have no idea where Walter is now. Okay, it looks like he is in the trees. Okay, buddy, that's fine. That's fine, you be safe, and uh, we are gonna try and get back to where we should be. Oh, okay, where's the horse that was here? I don't know if there was a horse in this one, actually. Well, those chunks aren't gonna be able to make it out of there. I think we will be safe back inside. So we're gonna start to make our way on over as crippling deja vu is stopping us from getting that way, okay? Then south? No. Then north? No. Okay. Oh my gosh. It doesn't matter which way we go. And these memories, they do seem to be able to attack us as well. Okay. Let's be wary of the Malleus. From memory, some of these things can actually sap our strength and sap our abilities. So standing back to back, the twins get ready to defend themselves. Okay. Can we keep on moving? We can. Back towards the house now. Oh god, deja vu is still hitting us, but we're close. It's in sight. We're nearly there. Okay, it looks like we might have to try and take down this thing before we get back inside, if we can get close. Come on. Nope, but Elliot's dealt with it. Okay, we're nearly there. Another Flatlander? That's taken care of. Okay, well I don't think we can go back to cooking the meat right this second, but we can slash this thing to pieces. There we go, okay, a spiked sphere. We got it to drop something else. Okay, and that one just immediately disappeared. The swarm structure, that can make other things appear, and sure enough, it has. So let's just keep on spinning our blade around. Hold the ground. Okay, and what is this? Yet again, it is one of a kind. An artifact, a spiked sphere. Let's pick it up. We have that, and we also have the slime rod now. The slime rod doesn't have a charge currently. Don't know how it gets it back. It may not get it back for all we know. Okay, I think we're gonna get back inside now. This is, uh, this has been a lot. Elliot, where is your longsword? <sighs> Dear, what can you do? Hey, good to see you, little one. Let's play with Caterpillar. Okay, 
we hear that high-pitched squealing. We can hear it calling out for us. And we can sense, we can sense those persons outside. That's intriguing that we can see them through the walls. Okay, oh wow, they are, they're kind of getting stuck, stuck in our pit at the moment. Okay, are you going to try and bash down the door? I mean, they don't seem to be trying. Oh, okay, they can just open the door. They can open the door. Okay, the person is downed currently. We have a memory stuck in the pit. Uh, okay, let's dive around the person here. Elliot, we're not going to let this person get away. I want you to move to this location, please. We continue to attack. I mean, Elliot doesn't have much that he can attack with right now. This person's going to keep on fleeing, aren't they? They are. What if we use far hand to pull them back in? You know what? I think trying to use our telekinesis on them is going to be the best thing that we can do. So far hand to pull them in, and then we're going to slam them against the wall with a force shove. Eh... Uh, doesn't do enough. But if we stand on this door, I don't think that they're gonna have a way to get away from us. I mean, they're gonna try and flee, that's for sure. But Dust can stand here, stand her ground, and continue to attack it. I don't know if there is a way to kill this thing, this person. But we are, we are damaging them. With every attack, we do more and more damage. Just hold your ground, Dust. I mean, that last attack, she did 20 damage from her fangs, six damage, and then a 61 critical. I mean, it's saying that it's damaged, but I'm alarmed by just how much it seems this person has in the way of fight. We've continued attacking again and again, and I don't think we're making any headway. It really doesn't seem like it. So maybe these are just unkillable. If that's the case, get the hell out of my house. Let's close that door, and I'm guessing the new one's gonna probably try and open it, right? Yup, get out of here. Let's close it again. And they're just gonna keep on coming back, huh? I said go. Oh, come on. All right, full shove. The door's open and now we have things getting inside here. That's not great. Let's see if a mind hammer does anything to it. I mean, 50 damage. It's downed it, but that's about it. Oh boy, okay. Well, there ain't much we can do here other than just stand our ground and try and strike down what's here. And these three people, these three persons, seem to be unwilling to leave. I think if they lose track of where we are, then we might be okay. Please, Caterpillar, you gotta stay away from this fight. If we move, will you leave? Doesn't seem like it yet. Okay, I'm gonna close this door at least then, and hope it stays that way. Ooh, I'm so tempted to break out our mech and try it on them. Let's shove this one against the wall. We're gonna do the exact same thing again, and it just doesn't seem to do really anything to it. We move upstairs then. Come on, everyone. It's time to go. Here is where we are going to huddle. Um, Caterpillar, are you still with us? I mean, yeah, in here. Okay. I think we're just gonna have to huddle in this room. We're gonna keep the door open for Caterpillar, Elliot. You'd be so kind. Oh man, they're just descending on the place. They must be able to detect Dusk, since that she's here. We've just had one of them disappear. Where is Caterpillar? Where is that cat? Did she make it back upstairs? No. You bastards, you better not have messed with my cat. I don't see Caterpillar, we feel dizzy. There, there, okay, up the top, all right. We still have this one trapped in here, practically immobile, and Deja Vu is hitting us again. And as we attack this one here, we are thrown back with that sense of Deja Vu. I'm gonna open the door in the hopes that we can get this one out. Come on, yep, that's it. And we'll force shove them away, close that door, and we're gonna make our way for the upstairs. Okay, come on, let's open this door here. Really would like it if Caterpillar came through right now, but it doesn't seem like Caterpillar's gonna do that. So, let's shove them away, close the door again. Immediately they know we're here, they're coming for us. We get knocked over. We're seemingly being affected by something here. Elliot is hearing those footsteps. I wonder if because we can really sense that they're there, no, we can't, we can't hurdle them away. We can from here. What if we use our static touch? We lost concentration. Let's try again. I mean, that did get it. Same thing again, zapping it. We're dazing it when we do that. And it doesn't seem to cost us that much stamina. Yeah, I don't know what else to do against this thing. Let's hurl it away. Yeah, we don't seem to be able to get it past this point, this little bit of damage. But then again, in saying that, if we hit it enough, it has enough. And then it just wants to get out of here. I don't want it screwing with our mech, so I think once we get them to that point where they're like, okay, yeah, I've had enough, I want to go, then we're okay. Man, they, they, they are coming back for us though. I think we just need to hold the door. Do enough damage to them that they want to just leave. Go on, get, 
Let's force shove it away. This one back down here, I think went aggressive again for a moment. But it disappeared. Okay. There are so many of them around us now. <laughs> we hear their hands on the walls outside. Reaching out to dusk. Seeking. But dusk will not let them have her. Electrokinesis. A new ability. One that was seemingly there all along. What other secrets does Dusk's mind hold? I hope in time we find out. For now, Dusk, Elliot, and Caterpillar are far from out this fight. People linger, and the woods wait. Legionnaires, I ask you all, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. We are far from done, and oh boy, the storm... <laughs> Well, it doesn't seem to be letting up. For now, I have been Rikon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.